to give ourselves to the Lord. And and this is something that we we do on a, a daily basis uh, with our relationship with him. Uh, we give ourselves to him daily as a, a living sacrifice mm -hmm. and that he can uh, take us where he wants us to go and give us the words to speak and to uh, fellowship with him. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to turn it over to, to Brother Fred. Okay, a lot of people are born of the Spirit and filled with the Spirit, but they don't want any more of the Spirit. They're not willing to get closer and closer to Him, and that's what it's going to take. Uh, we need to uh, grow closer and closer to the Holy Spirit, and that's where we will discover the mysteries of the kingdom, and that's where we will demonstrate signs and wonders, but it costs everything. I, uh, Catherine Kuhlman was the first uh, person I heard uh, mm -hmm. talking about that, and it costs everything. And we all can have it, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. How do we have intimate fellowship? Well, I want to start with uh, uh, some verses. We're going to look at this from, uh, from what the Bible says about it, and we're going to look at it from different ways. But I first want you to understand that our fellowship is with the third person of the Godhead because he is the one on the earth. He's the God on the earth. That's the Holy Spirit. And uh, we need to realize we have fellowship with him. Now, when I was born again, I loved Jesus. I knew about Jesus. I heard about Jesus. Uh, but it was not until I heard about the Holy Spirit, which was years later, and, and I began and I began to be hungry for the things of the Holy Spirit, and I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And when I was baptized and filled and immersed with the Holy Spirit, he began to reveal the Father to me. And, and so it was only through that process. And up until then, I only knew there was a, a Jesus, and I loved Jesus, and, and I continued to love Jesus. But there are three people in the Godhead, and the one on the earth is the Holy Spirit. And for us to be close, that we have to be intimate with the Holy Spirit. And the first a couple of verses I want us to consider are that we have fellowship, and our fellowship is with the Holy Spirit. So let's look at this in 2 Corinthians uh, 13, Jerry. 2 Corinthians 13, 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God. Okay, so when you talk about Jesus, you talk about his grace. We talk about the Father, you talk about his love. But now let's go to the third person. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Okay, so the one we're fellowshipping with of the three God, uh, members of the Godhead is the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. And we're going to read this out of another translation because you get this concept of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. And this is this in the is message. message. Same verse, Second Corinthians 13, 14. The amazing grace of the master, Jesus Christ, the exaggerant, all right, ex, is that what, that word? <laughs> exa, uh, extravagant, extravagant <laughs> love of God, the intimate friendship of the Holy intimate. Spirit. Intimate, here it is. It's right there in the scriptures. Intimate, intimate friendship our, of the Holy our, Spirit. Our fellowship, intimacy is right there in the scriptures. It says so. Be with all of you. Okay, so that's where it is. It's our Intimacy is with the Holy Spirit. Now let's look at it from another, from uh, Philippians. Philippians, Philippians 2. 2, 1 and 2. Therefore, if there, there be any encouragement in Christ, if any consolation of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit. Okay, who are we fellowshipping with? It's with, with the, the Spirit. Spirit. If any affection and compassion, make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. Oh, are you intent on one, one purpose? purpose? The Hallelujah. fellowship of Hallelujah. the Holy Spirit. Okay, now we're going to look uh, over the Bible and we're going to look at uh, that Holy Spirit action and what happens when, when we're intimate with the Holy Spirit. It begins in Genesis 1-1. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. I want to say something mm. about the earth at that point in time. It was empty. It was void. And uh, and another word there uh, 
is sterile. The earth was sterile. And you might think, oh, mm. oh, uh, what's happening in our world today? It's making some of it sterile. But I tell you, when the Holy Spirit gets a hold of things, things are going to change, change and become fruitful. Oh, hallelujah. So the earth was sterile mm. until there was a hovering of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. So we're going to look at this concept of hovering of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. for a few verses. He's already hovering in this in this session tonight. We've asked him to come and cover us and hover over us uh, this night in the name of Jesus. It says in the beginning, God created by forming from nothing the heavens and the earth. And the earth was sterile, formless and void. It was a wasteland. It was darkness was a face upon the face of the deep. The ocean that covered the unformed earth, the spirit of God was moving, Ooh, hovering, hovering, brooding over the face of the water. This is what the spirit does. He hovers over us. He moves. He hovers. And that word hovering and brooding and uh, like chicken, there's a, about brooding. But that word brooding, see, comes from breeding. And so oh, there's an intimacy here. And the Holy Spirit, uh, what oh, he's Jesus. hovering over is sterile. Oh, but he's going to bring life alive to, it to it by hovering over it. Productivity. Yes. Yeah, okay. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. And then... In Deuteronomy 32. Okay. Now, the, there are three real examples that we're going to look at, the Holy Spirit hovering. And the second one, so the first one was in creation. The second one was with Abraham and Sarah. Mm -hmm. Abraham and Sarah were, uh, they couldn't have any children. They were well past mm -hmm. the age of uh, having children. He, She was 90 and he was uh, 99 and, and so almost 100. And they had no ch no child between them, but that was the promise. And so, what's going to happen is that the when it was Moses describing this, and he's describing the hovering, a hovering over mm -hmm. Abraham and Sarah, and that's where the child came from. It was the hovering of the Holy Spirit. You might have thought, well, how did somebody, uh, a man who's a almost a hundred and her and it's with a wife nine how did they have a child surely they were past the age of of having a child but the holy spirit hovered over them now it's talked about here like an eagle hovering mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. them this is the history Hallelujah. of uh, abraham and sarah and the israel nation and that's what moses is describing here in deuteronomy read this deuteronomy 32 10 and 11 he found him in a desert land and in the wasteland. He's talking about Abraham. Mm, a howling uh, wilderness. Yo. He encircled him. Woo! Hallelujah. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirs up her nest, Ooh. hovers over its young, oh, here's spreading the out its wings, Hovering over taking them. them up, carrying them on its wings, so the Lord alone led him oh hallelujah hallelujah so, so what happened how did they have a child at that age at, at that old age it was the hovering of the holy spirit over them that's what um, moses was describing here just that's the way the eagle operated uh, uh hovering over praise god bringing forth but that's not the end of the story we, no, we can pick it up in hebrews 11 11 about sarah and there's some really important things here i want you to yes see. and before we get to 11 11 <laughs> let me say this that the holy spirit hovered over me and after 14 years of marriage 14 years desiring to have a child he hovered over me after three doctors told me I would not have any biological children. But the Holy Spirit began to hover over me. And Amy Elizabeth, Amy Elizabeth was conceived. Hallelujah. So now I will read 1111. Hebrews 1111. And By I, faith. And I've inserted a Greek word here. I want you to hear this mm -hmm. Greek word. 
By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, seed. which is sperma. Now, the Greek word for the seed there is sperma. sperma. You know what we get, what we get from that word? It's the male sperm. Sperm, hallelujah. So, Sarah received strength. And when, when did that all happen? It was the hovering, hovering of, of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit over Adam, over Abraham and Sarah. She received strength to receive seed, but that's sperma, the Greek word sperma here. And, and we're she, going to follow that more later on. And she bore a child when she was past the age hallelujah. because she judged him faithful who had promised. Okay. Hallelujah. But there's a third example I want to get Amen. to. And this is a little girl, a little a lady called Mary, the Virgin Mary. Amen. And uh, the angel comes to her and says she's going to have a child. And so let's look at what was said to her. Luke 1, 34 and 35. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I have known no man? And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you or hover over Ooh, you. You see it? There it is again. Hovering of the Holy Spirit. Over and listen Mary. to this part. And the power of the highest, the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also that the Holy One who is born will be called the Son of God. Hallelujah. So when the Holy Spirit hovers over us, that's intimacy. When the oh, Holy hallelujah, Spirit hovers yeah, over hallelujah. us, He's going to deposit something in us. us. He's going to deposit shut up, shut the shut seed up, in us, Amen. the sperma in us. Yes. And what's going to happen but is that Jesus Christ, Christ will, is come going, forth. will come forth in us. Woo! Hallelujah. hallelujah. That's the hovering of hallelujah. the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Here's another example of that word overshadowing. It's in the New Testament. It's in, it's, uh, it happened other places in it, but the one I want us to look at is Peter. Peter walked down the street and people were healed. Mm -hmm. Because why? Because there was the Holy Spirit was oh, overshadowing oh, him. And this time, it didn't bring forth a child. It brought forth healing. Oh, praise God. Still praise the, God. Oh, still the same word, overshadowing, mm -hmm. or the hovering of the Spirit over Peter, which he can hover over you, overshadow and, over, mm -hmm. and hovering mm -hmm. over you. Read this verse, Acts 5. In so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow them and they would be healed. Oh, there's the word overshadow, but it's Hallelujah. the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit over them. And now it didn't bring forth a person, but it brought forth healing uh, by Jesus Christ. He's the, he's the healer. Now I want to look at this intimacy from a different way. We're going to look at knowing by knowing the Lord in this case. Amen. And I want to start, uh, I want to start with um, Genesis 4. And this says that Adam knew Eve. This is the way the scriptures say. Adam knew Eve and she conceived and brought forth a son. So when we know, see what the Bible uses the this uh, descriptive words here. He's saying, the man, the husband, knew the wife, and she brought forth a child. I read this here. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at intimacy of fellowship with the Holy Spirit from a different way now than just the hovering. But it's about knowing and knowing the ways of the Lord. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so let's read another verse about the knowing that we know. <clears throat> when we know the Lord, it's we know his ways. And when we know his ways, see, we're going to, it's going to impact our lives and it's going to bring forth the Christ within us when we know his way. So it's that same concept of Adam knowing Eve and bringing forth, she conceiving and bringing forth the child. But now we know when we find out the ways of the Lord. So read this. This is Exodus 33, 13. 
Now, therefore, I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me your way that I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight. Hallelujah. So, the, so you. our knowing, how, what our knowing is about, just like Adam knew Eve and she conceived a son, our knowing is knowing his ways. Mm -hmm. And that's when we're going to bring forth uh, Christ. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now to the Amplified, it says, Now, therefore, I pray you, if I have found favor in your sight, let me know your ways. Oh, no. This is about that mm -hmm. knowing, mm -hmm. knowing your ways. So that I may know you are become more deeply and intimately oh, there it is acquainted again. with you, okay. recognizing and understanding your ways more clearly. And that I might find grace and favor in your sight. Okay, so we're studying intimate fellowship. And here it comes from knowing his ways. Our intimacy with the Holy Spirit comes from knowing his ways. Hallelujah. Okay, here Hallelujah. was this next verse. James 4, verse 5. Okay, what we see here is that the Holy Spirit is a jealous lover. Mm, 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 Did mm. you know he was a jealous lover? Oh, he, he wants to love you. He wants to birth something in you. He wants to hover over you. He wants you to know his ways. He loves you so much. He wants to be intimate with you so that he can bring forth Christ well, within you. Oh, hallelujah. 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 So we're going to look at a couple of verses in James. Uh, James 4, uh, verses 5 and 8. The spirit that God breathed into our hearts. That's the Holy Spirit. Is a jealous lover. Jealous lover. Who intensely desires to have more and more of us. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go back to that song that we listened to. I give myself away. Hallelujah. And who do we give ourselves to? We give ourselves to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. With no strings attached. Anytime he wants to use us. Anytime he wants to hover over us. Anytime. You know, it's it's not according to our schedule. It's not according to our agenda. But it's according to his will and his purpose. Okay. So how do we do it? This is James 4, 8. It's by us drawing closer and closer to him. Jerry. Move your heart. See, this is all about the heart. I'm not talking about anything in the natural realm. <clears throat> Move your heart closer and closer to God. And he will even come closer to you. But make sure you cleanse your life and keep your heart pure. And it says, stop doubting. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, so we have a way to do it or prepare. We have to prepare our heart. Uh, we have to cleanse our heart. And we we start the process. Yes. We take the first step. Uh, we have to see him as the lover, the jealous lover, the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. He's the one that we can have intimacy with on the earth of the Godhead, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And it's the Holy Spirit we have fellowship with. And he wants intimate fellowship because he's a jealous lover. We have mm -hmm. to see him as a jealous lover. If we're going to be intimate and have intimate fellowship with him. And, and we take the first step. We draw closer and closer to him. And then he comes running closer to us. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I, hallelujah. Love, I love that. Yeah, I love it. Okay, now we're going to look at this from a little different perspective. It's us taking the seed, receiving the seed Hallelujah. of the Spirit. And uh, mm -hmm. this really relates to some Greek words that we're going to be looking at here. And it, it's spiro. The Greek word is spiro. And that's the word we get sperma from, uh, the Greek word sperma. So they're very closely related. And it says that <clears throat> the sower goes out and he sows the seed. Mm -hmm. But the seed, see, it is the sperma that we're talking about. And here it's uh, this word spiro can be translated as uh, receiving the seed. See, you have to receive the seed of the spirit before you can distribute the seed of the spirit. 
Now, you can have an intellectual knowledge about the spirit mm -hmm. and about the Bible, but to really impact people's lives by distributing his seed, the seed of the spirit, we have to receive the seed. And, and so this word can be translated when we sow, that word sow can also be talked about. You have to receive the seed of the spirit before you can sow the seed. So read Galatians 6, 8. He who <clears throat> sows to the spirit or receives seed of the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. Okay. So, and we have nothing to give except what we have received. Uh, the Corinthians, I love this, uh, mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians 4. Uh, read this here, please. 1 Corinthians 4, 7 and 8. What do you have that you have not received? And the answer to that is nothing. 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 Not a. <laughs> what do you have that you have not received? Now, if you did indeed receive it, why do you boast as if you had not received it? Okay. So the point I'm making here is that there is a seed of the spirit and we have to receive it from him. How do you receive it? It's with the intimacy that we're talking about tonight. It's about giving yourself away and realizing that he is a jealous lover and we run closer and closer to him. Mm -hmm. Now there's the three verses. I mean, there's, probably 40 verses in the New Testament that use this word sperma, but we picked out three verses I want you to read that just want you to see that it's the, this seed we're talking about is the Greek word sperma, meaning the sperm of a person, the third person of the Holy Spirit, which comes from Jesus. See, it, it all comes from Jesus, but it's coming through the, our relationship with the Holy Spirit, okay? Matthew 13, 38. The field is the world. The good seeds, the sperma, are the sons of the kingdom. Okay, so he's wanting to Hallelujah. bring forth the sons of the kingdom. And that's you and that's all of us. Okay, but see, what are what's that son? Well, it's come from, it's been birthed. It's been birthed by the seed of the spirit. Mm, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Read a couple more verses here. Uh, Galatians 3, 29. <clears throat> and if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, sperma, okay. and heirs according to his, up to the promise. Okay. So we're, we're the sperma of uh, Abraham. And then one more that I wanted to read. Revelations 12, 17. Okay. And the dragon was enraged with the woman. That's the church. And he went forth to make war with the rest of her offspring or the seed or the sperma who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Okay, so how do we know that we are the sperma that we're talking about here? Because we keep the commandments and we have the testimony Hallelujah. of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm Amen. bringing this to an application. Well, I remember we started uh, just talking about our in about fellowship, that. intimate fellowship is mm -hmm. with the Holy Spirit, and it's the Holy Spirit that hovers over us, and that's the same thing as the concept of us knowing the ways of the Lord, and that's when we take on the seed of the Spirit, and we produce Jesus Christ within us, Jesus Christ, grows up and he begins to have authority and wherever you go, you're bringing forth the authority and power of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. And now I've just got some simple applications here of how can we yeah. apply it in our life. And we start with Colossians 3 verses 1, 2, 3, set your affections on things above. And so you can't be carnally minded. You've got to be thinking about Amen. things above. This is how to apply this message. I'm giving you, I'm going to give you two different examples. Set your affections, and of course they're related mm -hmm. together. Set your affections on things above. I'm going to ask Sherry to, to read this to you. <clears throat> Colossians 3, 1 through 3. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is seated, at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things of this earth. For you died and your life is hidden 
with Christ in God. Okay. Hallelujah. <laughs> I, I, I just want to give a quick uh, testimony here. And that is, uh, Brother Fred and I had been married for several years. And, and the Lord said to me one day, I want you to merge into Freddie. I want you to merge into him. And I got very angry. And I said, what are you telling me to do to merge into Freddie? I am, I have my own identity. I have my own, I am my own self. Why do I need to merge into him? And he began to share with me that the oneness and the intimacy comes out of our merging into the Lord. We have to merge into him. And the way we do that is through the Holy Spirit and allowing him to lead us and guide us and be our teacher and be our guide and yielding to him. Then we merge with him. And that's where you're going to begin to be productive in your spiritual life. If you truly want to do something for the Lord, this message is critical. This message I want to take deep inside of my heart because I know that it's from the Lord and I know that it is a timely message for all of us. Okay. See, the concepts that I've talked about earlier may have seemed very abstract to you. But now I'm making it very practical. This this part is very practical. Set your affections mm -hmm. on things above, on things where God sits, where Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father. Set your affections up there, not on things around you. Set your affections. And Sherry and I pray this prayer over us yeah. every day, every day, because we want our affections Amen. to be set on things above and not on things out there in, in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the next passage I want to talk about is from Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians mm -hmm. 5. And, and these things uh, in the natural, they seem almost impossible, but I mean, they're just so uh, practical that we, we operate in this. This is what the the Lord is saying to us from Thessalonians, this is what Paul wrote to us. And it starts with rejoice. Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You hallelujah. Have some joy about it. Amen. Okay, rejoice. Read rejoice. This, read this There's four things here that we need to talk about. Four things. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Hallelujah. So those four <laughs> things are very important. Okay. But now I want you to read this uh, last verse in a couple of other translations. Okay. And out of the Amplified, <laughs> it says, Do not quench or subdue or be unresponsive to the working and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Woo! Hallelujah. And in the Passion Translation, it says, Never restrain or put out the fire of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. These four, Hallelujah. These four things Hallelujah. Go See, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, <laughs> and everything, give thanks. thanks. When, when you do those th three things, then the Holy Spirit's going to be moving on you. Oh, hovering He's over be you. Hovering over you. And, and, and this is where you don't want to quench you. Hallelujah. Is, there's a fire burning when you're doing these three things. Mm. When, when you're rejoicing always, always praying without ceasing. Without ceasing giving thanks always and everything. And this is the will of God for you. When you're doing those things, there's a fire burning on you, with you, in you of the oh, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. That's, when, that's when some people are going to jump up and say, Woo, I don't want any more. I don't want any more. I don't want the Spirit moving. I don't. Yeah. But this is intimacy with the Holy Spirit Amen. that we're talking Amen. about today. 
These are practical ways to do it. Now, there are some people who pray uh, out of their emotions, and, and they are very strong about it for 30 minutes or 40 minutes or 50 minutes or hour or two hours, but do they do it all the time? Are they praying without ceasing? See, that's a different, <laughs> different perspective. You've got to be rejoicing always, praying without ceasing, giving thanks in you know, all, all things. things. For this is the will of God. And that's when the fire of the Holy Spirit is going to be moving on you. This is a practical way for you to have intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. But you've got to have your affection set on things above. And then what's going to happen, the Holy Spirit is going to be moving upon you and hovering over you and bringing forth Jesus Christ within you Amen. as a mature a son of God, you'll be operating as a son of God manifested on the earth. And that's what the earth is crying Look out for, for, for you to Hello. rise up Hello. as a son of God and manifesting Hello. the power and authority of Jesus Christ Amen. in your life. Amen.